and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we are going to be taking the module that I've been developing over the last few episodes and publishing it to the Terraform registry where there's module registry, a provider registry. In this case, we're going to be publishing it to the module re registry. Um, and so in order to do that, I've had to publish my code here on GitHub and uh, get things staged and ready. There's a certain naming convention that I, you have to follow, such as prefixing with Terraform and then prefixing with the provider and then pending the name of your module um, or module library in this case to the end of the repository name. So um, you have to follow that convention in order for this to work. Also, the readme file is very important. It's gonna load in the description here and then the contents into the documentation front page of your module. So it's important that you have these things in your module repository uh, before you go publish. You can always add them later, but it, it's good to be prepared. So I'm just gonna, I've logged in here. Uh, you log in to the registry.terraform.io using your GitHub credentials. Um, and then once you do that, you can go publish a module. And because I've logged in with GitHub, it's gonna pull all of my repositories and we'll see a big drop down here. And um, I'm gonna see this repo and that's the repo that I actually wanna publish. And so I'm just gonna hit agree and publish module. And, and there we go. So just in a few seconds, I've published my module. Now here I've got um, some provision instructions. It's loaded my, uh, my documentation from the readme.md and all, all, here's the full comprehensive readme.md with, with all of the contents there. So as I get better at my documentation, um, I, I can include additional content that provides more description um, for, the end, for the end users of this module to teach them how to use it. Right now, I'm just, I got a basic release history. Um, and, uh, you know, no example. I do want to add examples and better documentation in the future. And I think those will probably be good subjects for, uh, future videos, uh, showing you different tools to, to, to help you do that. So, um, let's, uh, let's go try and use this module because my module library is a little bit different. Um, the provision instructions kind of assumes that this is a single module repo. But in fact, um, if you followed my other videos, you'll know that this, mod this module repository is a multi-module repo, meaning we have uh, a number of modules, each in their own folder, each doing their own thing, each that can be used independently of the others. So you can kind of think, think of this as uh, kind of a base class library or a library, um, that a DLL, if you will, a package, um, that you can use and you can optionally, you can opt into different, different modules of these. You can, um, you can use one, you can use a few together, um, or you can use some of these like top, top, top of the pyramid type modules like repo, um, that are going to provision all the things underneath them. Um, so I, I choose this design structure for my module repos just to make it, um, to give the end user, the client of my modules, um, options, right? Um, I don't want to be like a monolithic thing that you ha like, there's only one way to do it. And that's, that's the only way. Um, I, I do want to provide like a, a path where if you want me to take care of everything, um, you know, here's, here's the module that will take care of everything. If you like what that module is doing, um, you know, but you don't, like some aspects of how it's doing it, you can look inside of it, look look at the other modules, and there'll probably diff be different examples that for the other modules. And you can take those other modules, the variable group, the pipeline, the branch policies, and you can stitch them together to your heart's content. So that's kind of my philosophy on building module libraries. So in order to do that, um, the default provisioner uh, is not gonna work. So let's, let's go consume this module um, and I'll show you how to use a few of these modules. Okay, so this is, you might remember this code from our previous episodes where we use this module. Um, again, I'm using the GitHub reference here 
and I, which is uh, basically using the module path to the multi-stage Terraform and then referencing the t specific tag version. So um, I've modified this a little bit. Um, we're still gonna be pointing at the Azure DevOps project called Infrastructure, and we're gonna be creating a new repo with a bunch of pipelines around it to execute Terraform into Azure. So uh, let's, uh, let's just try and get this working, just d dust it off, uh, it's been a while. Um, and so I'm just, I have my debug.sh, which has my PAT token in there for Azure DevOps. So here, um, so here I, I'm just gonna run my debug.sh script and I'm gonna pass it in whatever commands I want. I've set up this uh, shell script to take in the input parameters from the command line. Um, and pass it to the Terraform uh, command. So I could, I could run Terraform plan, apply, whatever, all from this debug.sh. This debug.sh is basically like a local, uh, a local script that I've included in my git ignore, so that it'll never get checked in. So it does, it does keep secret information um, on my local machine. Um, so just heads up there. So we're gonna run a plan and see what happens. Ooh, and it looks like we actually have a problem. And this may be like a bug in my, in my module. Um, so what do we have here? We have, uh, first of all, it's in the branch policy module, line 64 and line 65. So it's like we got on push reset approved votes to true, and then on last iteration require vote. So that's interesting. So basically, it seems like if this is true, then this can't be false. Or if this is false, this can't be true. Um, so this is actually a good example of, in the design of the module, how we could make the, the resource actually easier to use for, uh, for people in the future. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go look and see what the documentation says on, on push reset votes. So the documentation just says when new changes are pushed, reset all votes, does not reset or reject or wait. So, okay, here we go. So usually there's these notes here that provide uh, the validation rules. Okay, so let's think through this. On push reset votes, what is that? Basically, if you're submitting a pull request, you have a feature branch, you submit a pull request, um, and reviewers are assigned. That means reviewers might go out there and either approve or like reject it or request changes. Um, and so you, let's say there's two people. One person approves it, one, per, one person asks for changes. If you go out and you make changes and then you push that to your feature branch, that's going to call, if this is set, either of these are set, then it's gonna uh, reset the votes that are there. Um, this one will reset all votes. So basically the person that requested changes, their vote requested changes goes away. And the person that approved it goes away. And if this is uh, set to true, then it'll, it'll only reset approved votes. Um, and so I wanted approved votes to be reset. Um, so I've got that set to true. Now it looks like on last iteration, require vote is set to false and there's a conflict between this false value and that reset. So on push, on last iteration require vote. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why this is creating conflict. So if that's optional, I'm just gonna delete it um, and we're going to, we're, we're gonna push this code. Okay, so I've not merged version 1.07 into main, but it is it is out there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to test that version um, in my in my tester code here. I'm just going to update this to version seven. Again, we're pulling directly from GitHub, and it looks like it likes it now. Okay, so that's a good change. 
Um, I'm gonna go submit a PR on that. A few moments later. So that fix is out there. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, because this is published in the module repository, I'm gonna change my GitHub URL, and, and it looks like this is gonna work when we, when we provision this. I'm gonna change it to use the Terraform registry provision instructions. So I'm gonna grab this source for the module. I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm just gonna look at it, okay? So now, if I take all this stuff away, right? Basically, Mark TI is going to replace this whole, um, this whole GitHub thing right here, so that goes away. And then this Azure Terraformer, Azure DevOps is gonna get rid of all of this, okay? And what I'm let, and then the version number down here is gonna get rid of all of that. So I'm just gonna get rid of the ref, ref, reference. And so now what am I left with? I'm left with the relative path within the repo um, that's separated by the two slashes as we learned, you know, referencing our private Azure DevOps repo. Um, and I'm just going to put that to the end of the uh, Terraform registry URL and give it a go. A few moments later. Oh, so I pushed a new version of the code. I think I need to go out here and I need to hit refresh, right? I need to resync the module because I pushed a new version. And there we go. So I, as a module owner, okay, this is new to me. Um, I, I, I've just started uh, creating uh, module libraries out here. Um, every time I create a tag, push the tag, merge into main, um, I'm not even sure if I need to merge into main, but I think that that's a good idea. Um, uh, if I, as soon as I push a tag, then uh, I need to come out here, manage module, and hit resync module in order for that t version to become available. Um, I can bypass this whole process using the GitHub URL, but I don't want to do that, right? And um, people, people aren't going to use that either. So we're going to do that. There we go. And so as you can see, we have just changed the module um, reference from the old GitHub to the new uh, Terraform module registry, and it's pulling everything in as I would expect. Yeah. So. That, uh, that's how you publish a module to the Terraform module registry. Um, we, we went through a few things. We, first of all, I showed a little bit of insight into the development lifecycle of building your own modules, fixing bugs, pushing updates, um, which uh, we, we kind of stumbled into, which is great. Um, you, you need to you manage the versions uh, using Git tags. So uh, I, I pushed uh, a new version, version 1.0.7. Um, and after I, after I made those, that, that little fix to remove the conflict within the branch policy, I pushed a tag and then, uh, I submitted a pull request merged into main. And then I went out to the Terraform module registry, hit resync module and brought in the latest version so that everybody, you all can go use that latest version and not have to deal with uh, the little conflict issue that I had. So um, with that, we, we also demonstrated how we can use a GitHub URL or we can use the registry URL. And I would highly recommend using the registry URL. Um, but uh, as a developer uh, of a module, you know, it might be useful to bypass the registry so that you don't publish in development or alpha versions out there um, and cause people heartaches and think, oh, it's, it's ready and they just uh, blindly hit apply and the whole world comes crashing down. So um, I think it's good to know, you know how, that's, how that works so that you can use it in your develop, module development lifecycle. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. More to come um, right here on the Azure Terraformer. Of course, we're gonna be developing Terraform modules. We're gonna be leveraging uh, different Terraform providers and mashing them together um, all around our favorite uh, cloud platform, Azure. So let's keep Terraforming Azure together. That's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer signing off.